some of the applications of mobile devices um, and open source in mobile devices, which I think gives a bit of a good perspective and a, a good balance. So I'd like to welcome Nancy to speak about Bag Lady 2.0. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name's Nancy Murray-Fleed, and I'm doing um, a PhD at the Tasmanian School of Art in the Electronic Media Department. Um, so my background is um, performing arts and electronic art, so I might say some things in different ways than a lot of you probably are used to saying them, so feel free to ask me questions and bear with me on my uh, probably amateur technical explanations. But um, So I'm going to talk about the project, uh, it's a prototype of being um, developing uh, called Bad Lady 2.0 and um, yeah, it's basically um, a, 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 a performance tool for streaming on the fly but it has many different um, levels and um, probably can be implemented not just obviously for performance but also for tactical media situations. Um, so it kind of has two levels uh, in that sense. Um, yes. So on one level, um, I was quite um, inspired to build it with the help of um, Marco, who works at uh, the System Administrator for Worm in Rotterdam. It's a kind of interdisciplinary venue. And then um, I made it with him for a uh, work, a project called Make Your Mark, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, I read an article um, in the art form where it was an interview with um, Beatrix Colonia and Henry Barber, and they were looking at how um, mediations of public and private in the context of war um, are domesticated and informed developments in fashion design and architecture. Now, um, obviously, in a sense, uh, when the images and audio um, are captured and I upload them to the server, they're once checked to see if they've uploaded properly and then they're deleted. So the device actually only um, doesn't hold any of the data. So basically, you can kind of no one can grab that data once it's up on the server, obviously, if they find the server, that's another um, issue. But I was mainly um, thinking about the, there's a lot of places where you're obviously not allowed to photograph and capture images. And a concrete example of this is at the um, refugee um, kind of holding zones in the Netherlands where they kind of keep a whole bunch of people um, locked up for way too long and you can go there but you're not allowed to take any cameras or anything. So in a sense, in, um, apart from you know performance in an art context, this bag, um, obviously it's a bit clunky but um, you could embed the camera pretty well into the into the makeup of the bag and make it look like some kind of brooch, you know, and, and you could go along and just kind of capture and document what's going on um, in these particular scenarios that um, are kept very well under, under wraps. So that's the kind of tactical element of the bag. Um, but I'll show you how I've used it so far. It was for a project called Mark Your Mark, which is a um, kind of community cultural development project in Gouda in the Netherlands. And I just wanted to try it out first, um, in, in that sense, obviously. But other people could, like I said, develop it for other particular tactical methods. Um, this particular project uh, was going around the community and getting um, people to um, make a response and make their mark onto this map of data and, and, and talk about their particular um, favourite place in Gouda and they'd make their mark on a caravan. But I would just, um, I would document this with my bag as they were going around. Just, it was just, yeah, 
a simple tryout of how the device would work. So as you see here, it's just catching um, images. Um, and also here, but you can't hear it, is the Katata audio um, recording. So that's the front end. Um, I'll just talk about it technically for a minute, technically for a minute and I'll show you how um, can how it grabs all the images and then you make this animated GIF. Um, so anyway, the basically the hardware is uh, Alex board. So um, it's this. Yeah. Um, like it says, my Euro card format. It's 500 megahertz processor. Um, obviously, it's got VGA, USB, and a run on a 12 volt um, battery, which is you know, neatly can fit in the bottom of the bag. And that one's actually so far it's been for about five or six hours. And um, obviously, there's no screen, so that's um, I wear uh, headphones and I use this uh, uh, use automated bash uh, automated audio bash scripts. So number one is um, connect to a wireless phone. Obviously, it's working with open wireless networks, which in Australia so far I haven't really found any to to test and work with because it's. Um, yeah, there's not so many around, which is another conversation. But um, yeah, so number two, when number one, you know, it probes the network to find a wireless connection. Number two is disconnect, and number three is um, start recording the audio and um, video in this case in Motion JPEG because I'll talk about that future development. And number four is um. Yeah, stop recording. Five is upload, and six is upload check. So the basically it goes up to the server, checks everything in the hard drive, and then deletes all the data in the hard drive. And then uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, and then you know, number nine 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 is reboot, and three zeros is shut down. So this I've recorded all these audio, so the headphones, and I hear you know what's going on. Um, which is sometimes good, but sometimes there's a few bugs with it because it uh, often stalls and things like that. Um, so anyway, so yeah, as the alias board, you can um, plug a wireless card into it, um, and then you can tell external antenna. And um, there's an eight gig CF card, um, and the GPS uh, element of it, I haven't really quite implemented but it does work with it. Um yeah. So yeah it's uh, Linux from scratch with an Epix kernel and audio streaming and Starcast as a client. And then at the moment yeah it's a um UVC video module. Um so the front end as you saw was a Cortado player working with Google Maps here. Yeah. So mapping it to the location. Of where I collected the data on the Google Maps. Um, right. Um, so here's another. So basically, like I said, when I first used it, this is how um, the front end and how the data was implemented. So you could just go through all the images, then play the audio. Um, then uh, when I was doing some more testing at home, <laughs> obviously not at the street, but um, as you can see, so there's like a bunch of animation JPEG images that have been collected. You would hear it, but you can't, but there's a yeah, Katata audio player playing from the stream. So it's audio streaming at the moment with motion JPEG, um, not quite video, but maybe uh, I'll get to that bit and maybe people have some suggestions, some experts here. And obviously this is the animated GIF um, you can see here. So that's the closest I can get to video yet. Um, right. So the issue um, at the moment, well, there's a few issues. Um, 
So sometimes when I'm, I'm just waiting for an audio prompt with the headphones, um, it just won't play anything and I don't know what's going on if I don't have a monitor. Um, you can see. So here I'm like listening for the audio prompt. I've got my headphones on and I'm operating the remote keypad. But if I just don't hear anything, then I don't know what's going on. So um, I was thinking it would be good to implement uh, maybe a tiny little yeah, LCD monitor somehow. Um, so then at least I get a snapshot of a screenshot um, to tell me where it's at. Um, yeah, I'm using a, a Logitech 9000 um, webcam. Um, um, at the moment, um, I've got a, s even though it has uh, audio capacity, I'm using a separate uh, audio link. So I haven't got them to work in tandem. But um, at the moment, the reason why there's no video stream is that yeah, the raw f um, video file format um, from the Logitech camera isn't supported. And, um, Yeah, so the latest version of the UVC video module um, doesn't, doesn't compile. So, um, maybe someone knows about like this. I'd be pleased to know. Um, so, yeah, either I find another webcam that works for video for Linux. Um, but it also it's the problem with the CPU levels for such a board. Um, as well. So even if I could video stream, I don't know if the video stream would handle it. Um, so that needs to be tested too. So yeah, I mean maybe I'm not necessarily going for high quality, but um, drop the resolutions a bit. That's as long as you get the the information basically um, that you need to get. Um, so this is like basically just a documentation of what I tried uh, in terms of um, testing if a thing peg to fuel. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So an an another kind of area that I'd like to develop after I get through those basic um, obstacles. Um, is um, like a more um, bio power solution. So instead of using um, batteries, uh, try and um, see if it runs on your eco energy system. But that's like a long way off, obviously. But that that's quite um, yeah, that's just something we'd like to do. And I'd also like to try um, to have a few of these devices and make a local area. Uh, network in that sense and send data to each other. That's just another possibility that may be obvious for a lot of people, but not for me. So, um, yeah, you know, so far, the just the bag as a prototype, as it exists already, was um, picked up by this fashion technology research consortium and um, read about. And, um, yeah, yeah. In my use interactive telecommunications program, and people have been asking me if I want to make commercially, but I'm not really interested in that. It's more an experiential project, just you know, for um, not necessarily for fashion, but it's like a spy bag disguised as a fashion object, so you can take um, images and and sound and documents what's really going on. Um, as I said before. So this uh, theorist, Marco Tobias, chief, yeah, picked up on what I was talking about basically and said, yeah, the bag can serve as a personal recording device to capture one daily life, to record conversations, log geographical data and take images, or it can be used as a tactical medium in an urban space. So imagine there's a bag for a tour for grass where roots journalists operating under the conditions. Yeah, repressive conditions. So they can record images and audio files and send them immediately to a remote server and um, while deleting the compromising data from the bags when they reach the server, receive the files from the bag, the files are then deleted automatically. So um, that's 
um, the main point of the bag. And, um, yeah, so I think that that's, that's about it. And, uh, yeah, so does anyone uh, have any questions or uh, solutions for my video streaming dilemma? <laughs> <laughs> or any other questions, of course. I've got a number of questions. Um, firstly, what was the main motivation? Was it because you were trying to get a form? Or was it actually for a functional purpose? As I said, the main inspiration was to see, um, just because I was involved with quite a few uh, grassroots projects, um, over the years and you go to particular demonstrations or particular uh, events that do need to be documented but you ask for your camera to be taken from you. So on that level I, I wanted to make a device where I could you know, essentially hide the technology but capture what's going on. On another level, because I'm an artist and coming from performing arts, that's always playing into my ideas so I thought oh it's also an electronic performance tool, in fact. So it's got two levels. Yeah. Does that answer your question? <laughs> um, the question. Um, in the I don't, I think, yeah, it's just beginning to people to understand that they, as far as I'm um, concerned, probably have a biased opinion, but I think people in you know, new media and electronic art are just starting to understand that they should approach working with code and technology as a craft, rather than just something you get someone else to do for you. But it's, uh, it's I think it's new, and it's, I mean, obviously, this dialogue between an artist and a, and a programmer is um, is a hard one, but ultimately very important one. So, I've got to build the bridge. <laughs> yeah, uh, open source. Yeah. Like, what? This is the board or the ISIS Wi Fi hard drive? Yeah. I know they've been used, but they're really buggy. And this is the next, um, I think, anyway, this seems much more stable than those um, ASUS boards. Like... about the dog button meeting, so I've been able to do some, but I just wondered if there's a specific project, because there's one specific project um, by Shuni Chen working with those ASUS um, routers, the wireless, you know, routers, but they were, um, there's a lot of problems with them coming out and, and so forth. So I wondered what you mean. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the community wireless projects in Europe have, you know, do these kinds of projects like in Berlin, they use a lot. In yeah, in Freefoot. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. uh, in Adelaide, we use them. Yeah. Kinds of things. So you can get a uh, video streaming over the network on one of these? How? Um, well, well, we can talk later. Um, we have uh, a wireless network around the city. Yeah, but that's your own, that's your own LAN, right? It's not like I, I can just quickly upload to a server. Do you know what I mean? It's a LAN it's a, that you've set up. So say if I don't have that room, if I'm in a, a particular location and I don't have my community LAN to go to, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm interested in quite everything, but I'm also interested, say for a tactical media, a tactical device, there's a location I have to go to, but oh, my community has, I don't have my Wi-Fi 
um, while a Amsterdam community uh, named the Dunan Among, so if that's an event that happens quite quite quickly, there's no time to just set up a you know, wireless network. So this I don't think is if if that's being done, let me know what we've got. But I don't think so. Mm. Yeah, but as in, yeah, I understand that, but I don't think that what at the moment, what I was talking about, I'll say it technically so I can make myself clear, is this bit, so you can set up, like you said, yeah, for sure you can set up that one line area, but what if I just wanted to go in myself and upload stuff to a server, that's but still have not using it now, still not using Yeah. 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 But you still need that bunch of people to get together. But that's good, but you know what I mean, so, yeah. Because I'm not in control of that data. Then I'm not in control of that data. Then I'm using someone else's. I mean, I'm already using someone else's network, but then it's a. Yes, yeah, but I see it that someone can intercept that data uh, quicker than me just quickly using a local network or wireless network. Do you know what I mean? If if I've got a device, then I'm registered. They can find me. They can track me. Uh, 
think we're, you know, Amsterdam or in the Netherlands and maybe in Germany, there's just so many, much, there's just a lot of um, wireless projects, wireless Amsterdam, you know, Free Funk in Berlin. So, yeah, there's just a lot more open wireless networks. Whereas here, but there's no one here. Pro like free projects and whatever, you know, if someone's left it open or it's a particular set up. I mean, you can use both, right? It, it <coughs> gets any open network and finds it and uses that to upload. So whether that's a project, a wireless project, or someone's forgot to leave, locked or don't, or doesn't want to have a closed network. Yeah. Yes. At the moment. Yes. It's just bash script. <laughs> because I've just come back here to live after whatever, a long time, so it's really terrible. <laughs> Do they? Well, that's what they claim. They've got free Wi-Fi at the, what the story, I can't remember the name. Lark. So you have to put a password in it, or you can just go down and use it? No idea, but I frequently buy a few, um, <laughs> few alcohol and beverage as well. Yeah, they'll wipe me around. The, 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 the shop next door has free Wi-Fi, so a lot of people will stack up the Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good to know. Yeah, you know, yeah. my studio is just down the road. Yeah, I've got another question. In terms of um, the project, you've done a lot of the artistic side of things. Mm -hmm. um, how much did you, did you know, how much, um, the, in terms of the interaction you had with the people doing the program work, how much did you have to learn? And um, well, it was more like I was just sitting there with a friend over a few weeks and doing it, you know. And then, I mean, I've been, um, you know, pretty much a newbie with um, Linux and Command Line, you know, Bash and, you know, but I, I mean, I'm learning, so each project I learn. A bit more. I don't know how many, much percent that was, so, you know. But learning how, um, I don't, I can't really articulate it. Yes, yeah, so I learned stuff, and I but you was. No, I'm not from computer science. I'm from performing arts, and uh, I did a in our media design. So yeah, we had to learn basic, um, like the highest level language I know is a bit of Python and that I know how to hand code um, HTML and JavaScript and CSS, you know, so that kind of level of interacting with the programming, yeah, but, yeah, is, does that answer your question? <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, d I do think there's going to be, uh, there's, I mean, there's so many more projects now where, you know, like art and science kind of collaborations and art and technology in initiatives. I'm not sure because I've just only come back to Australia. I'm still finding it all out. I mean, it was much more over there, and especially in Amsterdam, it's just full of great, grassroots projects where we set up your own hack labs and learn from each other and give workshops and learn, you know, so I'm coming from that side of things and um, I'm not sure how much of that's here and how much you have to initiate ourselves and so that's why I'm so happy that the Linux conference was in Tasmania this year, yeah, I mean, but in terms of, I mean, it's just, yeah, you've got to start sharing information more and I'd, 
I think the arts actually unfortunately are really closed um, from the arts to kind of making an effort with understanding the technology they're using and I um, yeah, advocate that they should but I don't know how many other people are by my side with that when you come up against walls I mean as, as a performing artist you know you get like the, a, lo a lot especially in Australia you get like you know, when someone's the technician for your, say, theatre piece, you get these two guys, you know, seeing the highest big wall of technology and, like, there's such a big gap, you know, so that's just the first step of saying, okay, put them in the middle of the stage or something, or make them a transparent wall of technology. I don't <laughs> know what I mean, like, there's so many levels of, um, oh, so many obstacles to get through in terms of implied rules and pro protocols for... Uh, artists and also for programmers, so just to break them up. The other thing that um, I'd be interested to know is in terms of the legal issues, um, because you the know, privacy issues of that. should check out what the <coughs> privacy issues are in terms of audio streaming especially um, because um, I haven't done anything here yet uh, uh, I'm safe um, but yeah I, I understand in terms of recording audio without telling the uh, agent um, there's big issues with that so yeah but I um, yeah so, I'm aware, but I don't know what they are. Okay, if there's no more questions, I think... Oh, one more question. Do you want to say something about the work that you have? Oh, okay. Yes, I'm also here um, as a part of uh, a project called Batteries Not Included, curated by Kevin Lee, and um, it's going to be up online probably from tonight in the morning, in the morning late. MediaDivination.net. Um, I don't have a flyer with me, but um, the, yeah, it's going to be online probably from tonight in the morning, and there's a terminal out there. And yeah, I'd love you to all participate in that. But that's something very different from this project, but also playing with our data mining and performance and the history of kind of divination. And yeah, having a bit of fun with learning all these kind of you know, Linux tools. Okay, thank you.